Hi everyone, welcome back to another video. Today we are going to put together some color combinations. I have my Crayola colored pencils here and then I have my color chart after I swatched all of the colors out. If you saw my previous video, if you didn't, I'll make sure that that one is linked in the upper right hand corner. But we are going to need this. And if you've done yours and you followed along with my video yesterday, then make sure that you have your color swatching sheets so that we could do all of this together and kind of just learn together. And then this sheet is where I'm going to place all of my color combinations that I come up with. I think because I want this video to be geared to more towards beginners and I want to add this to my adult coloring for beginners series, we are going to just start out with putting together three colors and I'm going to show you how to do that. This sheet here is available in my Facebook group. It is a sheet that I put together and I created so that you can always keep track of your color combinations on your coloring pages. It's got objects, so that just means whatever object it is you're coloring on your coloring page. And then you could just put the book and the artist and your name and when you started the page and when you completed it. And each one of these is for a different color and I believe it has seven, yep, seven spaces. And then you would just put your color combo over here and put the color here right next to whatever it's going to say on the line so that you could identify the color that you have colored in here as you create your combinations. But I'm going to use this page in a different way today and I'm just going to use it to keep track of my color combinations that I come up with using the 120 set of Crayola pencils. So I did go on my Facebook group a little earlier today and I let you know that I made an update to this page. This page has been around, this color, our color pencil combination page has been around for some time, but I went and updated it because it had the old Facebook group name on it. And so I changed that to Pamela's Passion for Pencils. Then I just added some of my social media down here at the bottom and changed a couple other things and just kind of synced up the way that it was a little bit more and move some things around just to make sure that it was going to fit on the paper the way that it needed to fit on the paper. So this is available in the Facebook group if you do need this page. And the only reason I made that post is so that y'all knew this video was coming and you could already have it printed out if you want to go ahead and do these color combinations with me. These sheets here, this uh, colored pencil color chart, these are available and free to you if you sign up for my email list. The link for my email list will be in the description box below. As always, I'll have everything listed down there that you've seen in this video in case you're interested in purchasing any of this for yourself, mainly the 120 set of Crayola pencils. Because we're just going to be working on creating color combinations with these pencils. There are some amazing, bright, beautiful colors in this set. You could see by looking at this swatch, but look at some of these colors. And we're going to use some of these amazing bright colors today and I'm going to show you how to use them for highlights when you're creating your color combinations. So I'm very excited about this video. If you would like to see more, I'm going to do much more and I'm going to do some more coloring with these Crayola pencils to show you that you guys don't need to run out and buy the most expensive of expensive and totally break the bank. So if you would like to see my future videos, make sure you're subscribed to my channel and you've got your bell notifications on so that you always get notified whenever I post new content. If you like this video, please do give it a thumbs up. That helps my channel out a lot. Let's go ahead and come up with some color combinations. So the first thing I always do when I'm getting ready to come up with color combinations is usually I have my coloring book sitting right here and then I have this piece of scrap paper which I usually use the Spring Hill paper because this is generally the paper that I use for most of my pencils. And so I'll have this page as a scrap sheet just kind of sitting off to the side over here and my coloring book is generally right here. And so when I want to come up with a color combination for any specific object on the page, I can just take my pencils and I could try them out over on my scratch sheet prior to laying any colors down on the page. 
This is so important because you don't want to have to worry about laying something down on your coloring page and then you think, oh my gosh, I just ruined it because the color combination wasn't right or the colors were too close or what have you. And then you have to worry about getting an eraser and erasing the pigment off the page, which generally isn't a big issue. But to avoid that, I just wanted to show you all today how I choose color combinations so that you can come up with your own. We have our test sheet where we're going to test out the different color combinations after we choose the colors. We have our colored pencil color chart where we've got all our colors swatch out. Again, this is available if you sign up for my email list. The link for that is in the description box below. And we are going to look at this and we are going to come up with some color combinations. We are going to start by sticking to just the same color family because I believe that is the easiest. And this is going to be part of my adult coloring for beginner series. So we want to keep it easy and then just kind of move into the more difficult ones. Take a look at these colors. So what we're going to do is we're going to need a color for shadows, a color for highlights, and then a color that is just kind of our mid-tone color. So let's pick a really beautiful highlight color. <laughs> but look at this lemon glacier color. This is absolutely beautiful. And what if we just kind of went with the first color combination being, since we're using yellow, we should probably just kind of stay in this row here and maybe add a more mustardy yellow as our darker tone, maybe this harvest gold. That's a really pretty color. This is generally how I do it. I'll choose a very light kind of bright color that pops off the page for my highlight. And then I will take my highlight and I'll see what it will go best with. I'm looking at this and I'm thinking it would go gorgeous with this golden yellow, but it, I don't know. It might be since they're Crayolas, I don't know because they absolutely blended really, really well for me. I was actually quite amazed in my previous video where I colored with it, where I colored the butterfly. If you've not seen that video yet, I'll post that up in the upper right hand corner so you could go check that video out. But you will not believe the way that these pencils performed for me. I was really quite impressed. And that's why I keep making videos for these Crayola pencils because I've really come to love them, which I did not think that was going to happen. So if we look at these colors, we've got this lemon yellow and then we've got this lemon glacier. I really, really love this lemon glacier for a highlight color and I want to be able to use some of these really bright colors that just pop off the page. So I think I'm going to take this lemon glacier and I'm trying to see what I think it would look good with. Maybe this mango? I don't know. What do you all think of the mango? the mango with the lemon glacier. Now you know that we are going to test these and that's why I've got my test sheet. So before we choose our third color, let's go ahead and check out the lemon glacier and the, which one did I say? The mango, the mango. So lemon glacier and mango. So you just go to your case, your pencil case where you should have all of your colors in color order. As you can see, mine are all in color order according to my color chart and they are all very nicely sharpened. So here is my Lemon Glacier and then we want to grab Mango and that is a little bit further down the list. So I have my Lemon Glacier and I have my Mango and what we're going to do is we're just going to see, oh gosh, look at that color. <laughs> I just, I love so many of the colors in this set. So we're just going to lay that one down and then we're going to come back and we're going to lay this mango over the top of it and see how these colors look together. I don't know. Let me see. Let me look back at this and see, I don't know, that lemon glacier might be kind of bright because if we look at this mango way down here, hmm, what about the mango and the lemon yellow? It's still bright, but it's not like fluorescent. Let's try the lemon yellow. 
We're gonna put our lemon glacier aside and now we're gonna see if this looks any better with this other yellow. So I'm gonna lay this one down here first and then I'm gonna come back and add so oh yes, I think this one's better. This does look a lot better together. So I really like those a lot better and this is a fantastic highlight color. So remember that guys, that lemon yellow, it's very, very pretty. The other one's really pretty too, but I think that the contrast in the colors is just too off because this one is so neon and then this one is more muted. So I just, I don't know, I think this one looks a lot better. So we're gonna go with that one. And then so the next thing that you need to do after you've got, I'm going to use this for my mid-tone, I'm going to use this for my highlight. So now we need a darker, darker color. So we started with yellows and a lot of time it's just really safe to stick with your yellows and be able to stay in the same color family. As you can see by these two colors with this lemon yellow and then the mango, if you look at this, you can tell that the mango does have yellow in it, but it doesn't have a whole lot, like it's kind of like a mix between yellow and orange. So it still has yellow in it. And so we are staying in the same color family, but we are going to try to add something a little bit different that still has yellow in it, but I don't know, maybe has some brown in it or something. So kind of staying with very safe colors. Look at this harvest gold. What do y'all think of that harvest gold? It's still in the yellow family. It still has yellow in it. It's kind of going here into the oranges. It has some yellow in it, some orange in it, but it's a really pretty color. I say we should try that. So let's grab the harvest gold. Okay, so I got my Harvest Gold and we are going to add, oh, that's pretty. This Harvest Gold is so pretty. So let me come back with my mango and just blend this out just a little bit more. Now, like I told you all in my earlier video where I colored with these, you're not gonna get a whole lot of layers out of these and they're not meant to get a whole lot of layers. And it really kind of helps if you want to color faster too because if you saw my last video, I probably colored that butterfly a lot faster than I would normally color. So now what we're gonna do is we are going to take this color combination so that we always remember it. Look how pretty that is. I really love that. And it's like we stayed in the same color family, but we kind of went out of the color family at the same time. But we did use all safe colors or what I would consider safe colors because they are on the same side of the color wheel. I went and grabbed my color wheel just to show you all exactly what I'm talking about. So if we look at these colors now, don't look at the barrels look at the leads of these colors. But if you look at the color wheel, you can see what I mean when I say safe colors. You could see a lot of these colors kind of match up right in this area. And so they are all to one corner of the color wheel, which makes them safe to be able to blend together. Now, where you really start to test the pencils is when you decide to take something and blend it together and it's on opposite ends of the color wheel. Like if I decided to take yellow and combine it with pinks. I've done it before and it works and it actually turns out beautiful, but you really have to know how to blend them together to make it work. So once you get out of just staying within the few that are very close here within the color wheel and you try to take something that's over here and blend it with something completely on the other side, then you're getting a little bit more daring 
and sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't work it depends on the colors that you're trying to mix sometimes you can mix the wrong things and you will end up with just something that looks like mud now what you're going to do is you're just going to come to your swatch here and the way that you use this is you just go ahead and lay down your colors so this is my harvest gold and again, I'm using the Spring Hill paper that I use for most everything. So I'm only putting it up here so that it can stay and I could write Harvest Gold on this line so that way it is lined up. Then I'm going to come in with my mango and I'm going to add some of that and just kind of blend that color in there. Only down to where that line is. And the whole point of doing this is so that you can save your color combination for later and you remember what you did and then if you're looking for a combo for a coloring page or something you have it and if you want to come back and lay a little bit more down and darken it up you can do that too now these three colors look really really nice together but if I wanted to, I could always come back and choose another color and create more shadows and do all of that. But I really want to just keep this video specific to just three color combinations. I may go ahead and do a future video where I show you how to blend like a crazy amount of colors together. You guys have seen some of my videos when I color and I may do one flower and I may have like seven, eight, nine, ten sometimes colors that I've put together. But if you are just learning how to blend your pencils together, you don't want to overwhelm yourself. And three colors for one object is just plenty because you've got everything you need here. You've got your color for shadows and then you've got your mid-tone and then you've got your highlight. So then what you would do is you would just take your pen. I'm using my Micron pen. I love these. But then I would just write in here what this one is. This is the Harvest Gold. And then I have Mango. And then what was this one called again? Lemon Yellow? Yeah, Lemon Yellow. So we've got lemon yellow. So that is our first color combination. I say that we put together one more, just kind of trying to stay, like I said, in the safe area with colors that are sort of in the same color family or have some of the same colors within one another as we go through the the mix of the three colors. Like, you know, we had yellow and then we had one yellow that had some orange in it and another one that still had the orange in it, you know and so on and so forth so we kind of stayed within a safe zone I want to do another one now where we kind of sort of stay in that safe zone where are we gonna go next I've really been wanting to work with some of these blues I've not tried to mix any of the blues yet in this set there's some really gorgeous greens down here too look at these bright greens this spring frost is amazing this screaming green is even more amazing. <laughs> I love the greens in here, but I love the blue. I love all the colors in here. I don't even know what I'm talking about. But anyways, I love this absolute zero for a highlight color. And then I love this Pacific blue. So I've got Pacific blue and absolute zero. Let me go ahead and pull those two. So I went ahead and chose another one. I've got Pacific Blue, and then I did Absolute Zero, and I'm thinking that I'm gonna use Pacific Blue for my darkest color. And then I went ahead and went with Sky Blue, which is right next to this Absolute Zero. And if you actually look at them in the pencil case, they look very, very similar. But if you look at them here on the color swatch, there is actually a very big difference between the two. If you look at the barrel, of this pencil of the um, absolute zero is this the absolute zero yes this is the absolute zero so if you look at this this is why I tell you always have to swatch your pencils because you can look at this and this actually looks darker than the sky blue but it's not darker than the sky blue so 
yeah always make sure you swatch your pencils because you can see the difference on here after they were swatched out and if i didn't have my swatch i wouldn't even know that i would look at these and even look at the leads and think that this one was darker than this one and it looks very much darker than this one but it's not so let's go ahead and swatch these out on our test sheet and see what we can come up with And see, now I'm going to be confused because my absolute zero, that's my Pacific blue, the, but the absolute zero is so tricky because it's the lightest color, but it doesn't look like the lightest color. So let me go ahead and lay down the lightest color first. Just one layer. And then I'm going to come back with my sky blue. And look at that. See the difference? But see, you can't complain because these are really great pencils and they are like 20 bucks for the whole set. <laughs> so that is just something very small to have to worry about considering the price of these pencils. That is so pretty together. What do you all think? You have to let me know in the comments what you think of these color combinations. And if you guys come up with any color combinations, post them in the comments below. And if you want me to, I will take all of your comments from there and I will post all of the combinations that you guys come up with too. And maybe we could start a little list of color combinations for these Crayolas in my Facebook group in maybe an announcement post or something. And don't worry, I will give you all the credit and it will have your name on it. So if you have any color combinations that you've come up with that you absolutely love, let's go ahead and do that. Let's start making a list and coming together as a group and just making a list of the colors that we could come up with that look absolutely beautiful together. So I'm doing my absolute zero first because that is my lightest color. Then I am going to come back with my sky blue. I just can't believe the difference in these two from what the barrel looks like <laughs> and what the lead looks like because if you look at the lead, it's the same situation. And then here's the Pacific Blue. Look how these blend together. Like you seriously cannot complain for a 20, what, $23 set of budget pencils. I know that some of you were saying that they are so expensive to get in Canada and you wanted them so bad and you were so upset that they were so expensive. So I'm just going to come back over with the sky blue. Wow, look how much pigment is in this pencil. That's really surprising for such a budget-friendly pencil. And then I'm going to pull it back down with my absolute zero. Look how it just really blends out. I mean, I'm not even pushing with hard pressure or anything. I just really love these pencils. I'm so surprised because I really did not think that I was going to like them. Okay, so our first color was Pacific Blue. And then our next color was the Sky Blue. And then the last one was Absolute Zero. What a strange name. <laughs> okay, so we have another beautiful color combination and we're all in the same color family. I'm going to set those aside so that I remember them later. What do y'all think? Do you think we should get kind of daring right now and just really put these pencils to the test and see what they can do? I don't know. What should we mix? How about mixing maybe some purples with pinks and reds? I mean, that's a little bit more kind of out of everyone's comfort zone, I would think. It's still kind of safe because they're still close on the color wheel. But how about we pick one from each 
category and try to do it that way. So we're going to pick a red and we're going to pick a pink and we're going to pick a purple. So I say that we should probably go purple into pink. Let me see. Maybe we should do pink for the highlight color. Look at these beautiful bright pinks. Look at this winter sky and this pink flamingo. I want to do something with those. Either that or this razzle dazzle rose is so pretty too. There's some really beautiful pinks in this set. So what do we say? Pink and purple and red. So maybe we should go from red into purple into pink. Maybe not. <laughs> I don't know. Um, maybe we should do, let's do purple into red into pink. So we would need to find a really dark purple. What is the darkest purple here? I'm thinking plum. Plum is the darkest purple we have, so that would be a great shading color. So we go very, very dark, and then maybe go and take that one into red. And now see what I would do is try to find a red that has some purple in it already that would be able to transfer into pink and still be okay. I don't know. I don't really see anything like that. Oh, 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 oh. This has red in it, but then it's not really a true red. The orchid, that's not really a true red though. Maybe we should start with ultraviolet. I think that maybe plum is way too dark. So maybe ultraviolet. I hope that it's helping that I'm kind of just like talking you through this. I hope that you're really learning from this as well and how to combine the colors just like I just said that we weren't going to use the plum because the plum was so dark and is kind of leading into the blues and we don't have any blues in this color combination. So we probably should really stick down here to something that can transfer into another color. So how about we go with this ultraviolet and then use something that still has red in it that brings us into pink. And see, to me, that's either going to bring us into either this dark mauve or one of these mauve colors. Ooh, this marvelous color is really pretty. Or we could go into Orchid and we need to stay more muted instead of going into something super, super bright like over here. Like we probably shouldn't do that because that's too much of a change. These two colors would go better with colors like this that have more red in them. But if we are going to do the, did I, yeah, the ultraviolet. So we're going to do the ultraviolet. And then we are going to do one of these mauve colors. I say ultraviolet, marvelous. Let me pull those so I don't forget. So ultraviolet and marvelous. Oh, it's marvelous. See, I'm calling it marvelous. It's marvelous. Did I write it right? On? I did write it right on my swatch sheet. So we have these two. Okay, so if we look at these, we've got Ultraviolet and Mauvilus. And so the colors that are going to be safer is maybe if we add this Fuzzy Wuzzy would be really pretty. I think that would be really pretty. Either that or we could go with this pink because it's more muted and not as bright. And since these are such muted colors, it just would kind of flow a lot better. Let's try pink, just the straight up pink with this. And that one was quick, I got that one. It makes life so much easier when y'all have your colors all swatched out because had I not had them swatched out, this would not have been so easy because I would constantly be looking at the leads of the pencils. And you saw in that blue combination that those, even the leads of these two pencils, let me show you this again and why it's so important to swatch everything out. So, I don't think it was this one. This one here is the absolute zero. And then this one here is the sky blue. The sky blue is much darker and much more pigmented. And this color, this absolute zero, is a very light, light color. 
So if you look at these next to each other, you would automatically assume, if you did not have these swatched out, you would automatically assume that this was going to go down very dark and that it was going to have a lot of pigment into it, in it and it was going to be actually darker than this other color here, the sky blue. And that was totally not the case at all. If you look at our page where we swatched them out, look at the difference in these colors. This one is so much more pigmented and so much more darker. And then this is so pale and light. So that's why it is important, no matter which pencils you have, to make sure that they're swatched out. So we are gonna lay down our ultraviolet, just one layer very lightly. Then we're gonna come back in with our marvelous. And then our highlight color, which would be our pink. And this is gonna be more of a muted highlight color just because this color combination, all of the colors are much more muted. And so when you're going with colors that are more muted, you don't really wanna add anything that is super bright, 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 because I don't think it's really gonna look that well. It doesn't usually look really good when you try to do that. But look how pretty these are. I'm coming back with another layer. Oh, this is a really pretty combination. And you could always come all the way back with your lightest colors and just kind of blend them all in. Look how pretty that is. So let's go ahead and put this one down on our sheet. So this way we can always remember it. So I'm gonna start with my darkest one, my ultraviolet, and I'm gonna lay one layer here. And again, I'm just gonna make it even with that line so that we could write down and always know what it is. So we could come back to that if we ever wanna use this on one of our coloring pages. And this is the Marvelous. This color goes down so nice. Like I really can't even believe these pencils. I did not think that they were actually going to blend this easily. I mean, no, they're not like a Prismacolor, but they blend together really nicely. And they work really well on this Spring Hill paper, if y'all were wondering. The Spring Hill paper with these pencils works so, so well. So if you're one of those that wants to print out your PDFs and you wanna color something with your Crayolas, this paper is a great choice. I'll definitely have the paper linked down in the description box below so that you could find it. That is a really pretty combination. Look at that. Okay, so we've got ultraviolet. I'm probably not going to fill this whole sheet in this video. I'll probably come back with a second part of this. I think I spelled that right. Marvelous. Marvelous. I don't think it had any, but it is what it is, right? <laughs> Okay, and then pink. I have white out, so I'll fix that later. <laughs> I cannot stand when I misspell something. It drives me nuts. And now I'm looking at it and I'm just like, no. <laughs> but this is a beautiful color combination. Look how pretty that is. How about you say we try one more and then I'm going to come back with a part two to this video. If you want to see a part two to this video and you want to see me mix some more colors that maybe have a little bit more like maybe four um, combinations or four colors in the combination, let me know in the comments below because I really have really been enjoying doing some of these videos that y'all request. They're a lot of fun because I know that I'm going to get a lot of interaction down in the comment section and I love coming down there and talking to y'all and answering you. And I always try to go in there and answer all of your questions. Don't ever hesitate if you wanna ask me a question. I've had several people ask me questions and I always try to make it to the comments section to answer your questions. And if you don't do it in the comments section of my YouTube video, go to my Facebook group and ask questions in there. And I don't know, sometimes things get hidden in the Facebook group or they just don't get seen by people. So it's probably a lot better to ask your questions in the comments section of my video. So let's go ahead and I say we try some greens and maybe mix this up. <laughs> Can you tell I'm getting excited over this? I love putting colors together. I really, really do. It's like my favorite thing to do. So 
let's go ahead and we were going to use this Pacific Blue before and I really want to use this Pacific Blue because it is beautiful. So let's go ahead and look at this Pacific Blue. So let's do something that is going to look really cool. And I'm thinking, or maybe do I want to stick to more greens? What about like this green blue is just really gorgeous and it's so dark and looks so pigmented. And I kind of want to use one of these colors that just really pop. <laughs> so we've got our green blue. And I don't know, gosh, I'm stumped on this one because I love that color, but I don't know what it's going to mix with. And we just did a blue combination, so maybe we shouldn't do the Pacific blue. What do y'all think? I'm sitting here asking you guys like you can just answer me. And I do that all the time. You guys know I do that all the time. I like this screaming green. Like, I love this screaming green. I love this Arctic lime. It's so pretty. I want to try Arctic lime with this yellow green. And then I'm going to find another really dark green. So let's do the Arctic lime or Arc Arctic lime and the yellow green. Let me go ahead and get those. I have my Arctic lime and my yellow green and I'm trying to figure out what to put with those. And I don't know if I want to stay straight up in the green family or I want to add something very different and see if it works. So if we look at this, oh, should we go maybe olive? Because if we look at the yellow green, we can stay in the greens and maybe go down this way and get a more olivey green. But see, then we're staying all in the same color family and that's not really stepping out of our comfort zone. <laughs> but we did with the last one. We did really well with the last one. In the next video, I'll show you how to, if you want me to, let me know in the comments below. But in my next video, I'll show you how to mix colors that are just all over the color wheel and get them to work. <laughs> but it's like, I have such an urge to do that, but I don't, I know that this is adult coloring for beginners. And so I don't want to go too far out of the, you know, where we should be or whatever. So Arctic Lime, Yellow Green, And let's try this, t oh no, Tropical Rainforest. Let's try, try Tropical Rainforest. That's a really pretty color. So let's go ahead and try to do this green combination. And then we're going to have a yellow combination, a blue combination, and then the one that has some kind of pinks and purples. The pink and purple one is really pretty, but see... We stayed safe, but we added two different colors, so that was cool. So let's go ahead and lay down first this tropical rainforest. And I would say I had a pretty good eye because every single one I liked that I put down, except for when I first started and I added that yellow that was too bright. This is my yellow green. And then this is my Arctic Lime. And I don't know the, I don't know if the transition in that one is too much. I think the transition there may be too much and we would need another color to maybe add in there for that transition. So maybe we can do a four color combination because I really don't want to get rid of these colors. <laughs> I really like them. But if you look at this Arctic Lime and you look at the, what was it again? Yellow Green. So if you look at the Arctic Lime and you look at the Yellow Green, the transition of these colors, they almost need something to kind of bring them together. And I'm kind of looking at this Granny Smith apple. And I think since it's kind of halfway here between both colors, 
and it is a lot lighter than this one, I think that this color will bring the two of these together very nicely. So let's go ahead and get our Granny Smith apple and see if we can make this color combination work together. So I have my four colors now, here they are, and we're gonna lay them down and see if we can fix the transition between this color and this color. So we're gonna start with our Tropical Rainforest. And I'm just going to lay some of that down. Then I'm going to go to my yellow green. Was my yellow green my next color? Yes, it was. These two, the transition is fabulous. These look really pretty together. Then I'm going to get my Granny Smith apple. Yeah, see, that is like the same kind of tone as that Arctic uh, lime. And so I think it will really help to just kind of bring that in. And it does. Look how pretty. Now see, if I was using Prismacolor or something else, I probably could have gotten that to work just because the Prismacolor are so waxy. But because these are a more budget-friendly pencil, you can get them to work. But you just may need to bring in another color just to kind of bring those other two colors together if you saw what I just did. So let's go ahead and make a note of this color combination on our chart. So the first one we had was Tropical Rainforest. This is such a pretty green. And then the next one we have is our yellow green. So pretty. And the next one is the Granny Smith apple. And then the last one is our Arctic lime. And this is a really pale color but it's really pretty. And I'm sure if you colored something with it, it would really just make everything just kind of pop. And you guys know how much I love colors like that. But I am laying down another layer of my tropical green. I'm using a little bit harder pressure to get that pigment down on the paper. And then I'm coming in with my yellow green to kind of pull that through. Look how pretty those look together. Oh my goodness, I love them. These are great colors for a leaf. And then the Granny Smith. And see how that pulls that down so much better and makes a transition so that we can add that last color. And then we just come back with our Arctic Lime. And if you want to, you can go back over all these colors and just kind of burnish them out and get rid of the white of the paper. But that is really pretty. I'm just pulling this one down a little bit more just to kind of blend it out. Oh, I love that combination. That might be my favorite one. I don't know. I think my favorites are I love this one, and then I love what we did with these, um, the blue or the purples and the pinks. So let's go ahead and write the names down in here. We had Tropical Rainforest. And then we had our yellow green. Is that what it was? Yes, yellow green. And then we brought in that Granny Smith apple. And then we needed that Granny Smith apple to make that Arctic lime look really pretty. And so we ended up with a four color combination, but we stayed in color family. So that's really, really great. But I hope that this video helped you all to see that it is really fairly easy 
to put together your own color combinations when you are learning how to blend your colors together. And I think that was a really good lesson here where we did the greens and I showed you that they didn't all come together exactly the way that I wanted them to. And all I had to do was just bring in another color that kind of had a little bit of both of the same greens but was more of like a medium tone right in between the two. And you can use your swatch chart to do that and really help you if you've got your colors swatched out. Because if you saw, here's my Arctic Lime and here's my Yellow Green. And the colors are similar, but the color halfway down would have been this one, which has both of the same colors within this color and so it really helped to bring those two colors together so that was a really great lesson in and of itself and i hope you all really loved this video anything that you've seen in this video will be linked down in the description box below and i hope you all have a fabulous day happy coloring bye